Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome to Learn. Oh gosh, what is this? Learn Roblox. <laughs> um, as you can see, I am on the developers page, and I am going to be going through the next part of the tutorial. But I wanted to kind of explain it to you first. If you've not seen the first video, creating a simple obby, make sure that you check that out. Um, up here at the top, you can go to wiki.roblox.com and get to any one of these tutorials. These tutorials are online, and you can read them, read through them yourself. But that's the reason I'm making the videos is to read them to you. I know that me, whenever I was little, I was kind of having a problem with like reading and actually following along. So I'm always a better visual and um, audio learner anyway. So I hope this helps. Um, if you go over here to the Roblox tutorials, right here, the Roblox basics, all Roblox basics. This is the reason we had to do the getting started first was because making obby, your obby colorful is the next part. So we click on that, making your obby colorful. The first part of, uh, wait, in the first part of the getting started guide, you learned the, the basics of using Roblox Studio and designed a basic obby obstacle course. In this tutorial, you'll do the following. Explore the game design themes, change the color of materials and parts, learn how to use object properties. Game design principle theming, uh, okay, that's one, two, three. So on part one, this is where I'm going to be starting and I'm gonna turn this off. You can follow along on the webpage if you want. And yeah. Hopefully we can keep it down 10 to 15 minutes as always. And come on, come on, follow along, fade. So I'm starting off where I, or I'm beginning where I left off last time with our simple obby. This is codes test obby or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, this is the one that they want us to do. Um, let's go back over to the tutorial itself. Game design principle and theming. Theming often begins with picking out colors for a game. What colors would you use to create the following settings? A sunny day at the park, a volcano about to explode, a unicorn ranch on the moon. Design a game <laughs> design of game parts should match your overall theme. For instance, if your obby is a volcano themed, all the parts might be colored dark red or gray. If it's a unicorn theme, then the parts might be purple, pink, or blue. Uh, number two, changing how a part looks. Both color and material of a part can be changed with a couple of clicks. Changing the color. First, select the Model tab, right up here at the top, boop. And then, uh, this will show you the most important buttons and options for working with parts. Select any of the parts in your game. I'm just gonna select my first one right here. Click on the small arrow below the color. Uh, from the select a color from the Roblox color picker. Okay, I'm just gonna choose bright neon green. Oh, electric blue is a cooler color for this part. Oh, okay. Well, let's just do electric blue then. Is that electric blue? If you move your mouse over it, it will show you the colors. There we go. Electric blue. Hmm, I don't know if I like electric blue. Okay, Dig, Dig Dug's color. That's Dig Dug's color. We're, we're good. Oh, I like that. Okay. Changing the material. Changing the material of a part is similar to changing the color. Select the part. Done. And then select the arrow below the material. Done. Uh, select one of the included materials. Okay, I'm just going to choose corroded metal. Might as well. Oh, dude, that looks amazing. Tips, you can change the aspect of many parts at once. Uh, just follow these steps. Hold down the control button on Windows or the command button on Mac while clicking multiple parts. So hold control, click, 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 done. And then um, choose, the, uh, choose another color or material as shown above. I'm gonna choose the same colors and materials just because it looks amazing. Um, actually, let's just do that to all of them. Click, click, done. And then for each one of these, I'm just gonna choose a different color, maybe red here and a yellow here and green here and uh, purple. <laughs> so there you go. Those, those are the different colors and textures that you can put on them. Each one is kind of like a different theme. Um, object properties. The properties window lets you see and change many things about a part. In fact, uh, some things can only be changed in this way. Let's explore two of these. Changing transparency. Did you know that the parts can also look like glass or clear plastic? Just change the transparency of the part. Part properties. In 
in your, all right, number one, in your obby, select any part, done. I'm gonna hit F so it focuses on it. There we go, that's right in the middle now. Uh, da, da, da. Now, let's see, collect, there we go. Okay, open the properties window by selecting it from the view tab and clicking properties. Okay, so if you come up here to the top and click on properties, it should show you this window down here. I've already got mine open because I like having it open at all times. Uh, now look at the properties window at the top, you'll see something like this. Uh, appearance, brick color, color, material, just like that. Um, note that selecting the property window can expand hidden or clicking the small arrow next to the section. It can be expanded or hidden by clicking the small arrow. Oh, this small arrow. Yeah. Okay, so appearance. There we go. I don't know why you would close it all up like that. I mean, oh, it makes it cleaner. Um, if you don't see the options, then click the little arrow to the left. Change the transparency. In the properties window, click on transparency row, right there, and then click uh, select number 0 0.5. 0 0.5, we've done this. Transparency works on a scale of zero to one. A value of zero makes the part totally in, uh, solid, and of, but sorry, a value of zero makes the part totally solid, and a value of one makes it totally transparent or invisible. Setting custom colors. You're not limited to the color choices in the Roblox color picker, and that is actually a new feature, technically. It's a couple months old. Let's explore how to make a part any color you can imagine. In your obby, select any part. Done. I'm gonna use the sphere now. Um, in, the properties window, uh, in the properties window, click the small colored box in the color row. Color box, right there. This will bring up the color picker, which will allow you to choose any color uh, far beyond those normal choices. All right, if we click on the actual color, ah, oh, there we go. So it looks like an old uh, MS Paint window kind of thing. Or if you know the values themselves, you could probably just type in the values. So it goes off RGB. The first number is red, the second number is green, and the third number is blue. So if I did... 0, 0, 0,255, that should turn it completely blue, 100% blue. There's no red and there's no green. Uh, now the material is a different matter. We're not gonna talk about that. Anyhow, um, as, you, as, your test, as you test different colors, the part should change in the game editor window, which it did, excellent. Awesome, now you know how to change colors and appearances of parts inside Roblox. What's next? Check out these tutorials that will help you make a, uh, a bleh, that will help you create an amazing obby. And those parts are building hinges and turning platforms, creating traps and pickups. Oh gosh, did I not go long enough? That was only eight minutes. You know what? Let's go ahead and cram in a, a second tutorial on this one. Absolutely. So fade, 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 fade. At the bottom of this tutorial itself, you can see that there is a building hinges and turning platforms. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and here we go. We're gonna be on building hinged and hinged and turning platforms. So I'll, I will post both links in the description down below, so you should be able to just click on the link, it'll take you there. If you're on the page, hold control and click on the link. And, sorry, if you're on my video, Hold control, click on the link, and it should open up a new window for you. That way you don't have to go away from the video. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay, I'm gonna fade that back out. Fade, 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 fade. Here we go. And Internet Explorer. No, not Internet Explorer, get out of there. Oh gosh, Chrome, Chrominium. And Internet Explorer's crashed. That's fine, that's fine. All right, building hinges and blah, blah, blah. In the Getting Started Guide, you learn the basics of Roblox Studio and, the and you designed a basic obby, short for obstacle course. In this tutorial that you uh, you will be following, uh, you will do the following. Explore motion and timing in game design. Build a hinged platform that tips back and forth. Build a turning platform that spins like a clock handle. All right, and it says uh, one, two, and three. One, game design principle, motion and timing. At this point, you know what? 
you can actually read along with me if you want because it's very boring just to watch a studio window and not see anything, right? Right? Okay. At this point, your obby is probably fun to play but not too difficult. Most players can easily run around on normal platforms, jumping from one to the next at their own pace. So what if you add a platform that is moving uh, that move platforms that move and turn while wow, I cannot read tonight not enough coffee Would it make your game more fun more challenging adding motion and timing to an obby really takes it to the next level It makes players carefully decide when to jump from a still platform to a moving platform or even jump across many moving platforms to reach a safe resting point uh, Two, building a hinged platform Let's get moving first. We'll build a hinged platform like a seesaw uh, that can tip back and forth the challenging obstacle that a challenging obstacle that makes the player balance without falling off into space create a platform and a support the hinge platform will tip back and forth the player will walk on but first we need a solid support to attach it to uh, otherwise it would just fall off into space uh, that is true. Create the support. First, create a part in the platform. Somewhere in another platform in your obby, create a small cylinder part. So let's go ahead and fade that back out, just like this. And you can follow along with me now. So this was the resting point. So let's just go over here to this point and go up to model, new part, cylinder, good. We're going to scale. Notice that the default of that was one, one, two, one, two. There we go. All right, that, that looks way, way off. Maybe it's not. Let's move it down some. Why not? There we go. Okay. <laughs> anchor the new part in space, just like the other parts of the obby. So make sure we hit the anchor button, done. Uh, create a platform. Next, create a platform that will tip back and forth. Make sure that it's centered from left to right uh, with the support part so that it's balanced. Okay, make sure that it's centered left to right with the support part. Okay, so it says to make another part a block, just like this. And then it's centered along with the other part. Come on, just attach down. Perfect, perfect, just like that. Is that center? Yeah, that's center, it'll be fine. And then let's do scale this way, this way. Does not look like it's centered that direction. There we go. That looks about center, right? Yeah, perfect, good. Uh, so that it balances. Tip, getting, uh, in this getting started guide, you learned how to turn off collisions so that you could move parts without them being blocked from others. For this step, it might be useful to turn on collisions. Uh, okay, good point. Make sure collisions are turned on. That way, uh, when you're moving it, boop, like that, it gets stuck. I'm gonna turn my back off, because I don't like it. Remember that you might also need to change the step amount to get an exact amount, Ex wait, to get oh, wow, to get the platform to align exactly to the, the uh, exactly next to the support part. Important: Do not anchor this part. Remember, it's going to tip back and forth, so it shouldn't be locked in place. Name the part. As you design bigger and better games, it is a good idea to enter custom names for impart important parts. This helps you to find those parts in the Explorer window when you need the, to make a change about them. When you need to change something about them. Okay, they're talking about over here. So this part that's selected, I'm gonna go over here, right click, rename. We're gonna rename this one too, guys. Uh, notice that the most important part is, uh, notice that most parts are just named part. That's not too helpful. So let's change this. Right click uh, on the part in the Explorer window and select rename. I just did that. Uh, type in platform support. Wait, which part are they talking about? 
because that's not the part that I, I'm clicking on. <laughs> Platform support. Oh, okay, hold on. Sorry. This one right here, this is the platform support. So click on part and you can press F2 to rename or click and hold, same thing. Platform support. Good. And now this one is actually called hinge platform. I, I didn't read down far enough. Attaching the parts. Now that you have two parts, uh, two parts for the hinged platform, it's time to attach them. In Roblox, one way to attach one part to another part is to, with a constraint. Constraints attach two parts together and let you create special behaviors for the parts. Whew. Here are some examples. Door hinges, axles on a bike wheel, boat propeller shaft, your knee, your upper knee or lower, okay. I'm gonna skip over that. The hin, uh, for this hinge platform, we'll attach it to the support hinge with a hinge constraint. To get a better view of, uh, wait, to get a better view of things before you add the constraint, move the platform away from the support by a few studs. One, two, that's a few. Okay. Oh, 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 hold on, why did I do that? There we go, we're good. Um, select the platform support in the game editor window. Notice that it's easier to find now that you've changed the name to platform support. Zoom in to get a better uh, view of the part. Remember that you can focus on the part by pressing F. Make sure that you're viewing the model tab up here at the top, across the top. There you go. The constraint section, click on the small arrow below create and select hinge. All right, so constraint, constraint, constraints. There we go, create hinge. Move your mouse pointer into the game editor and hover over the support part. You will see a small bright green object called an attachment. This tells Roblox ex exactly where you the, where to connect the start of the constraint. So, boop, like that, I just clicked once. Carefully move your mouse over the side of the part until the attachment is in the center, just like we did, okay. And then, uh, click on the mouse button to start adding the attachment. That's step seven. Step eight, adjust the camera so you can see the thin side of the platform, the hinge platform located near the support part. Move your mouse over the, wow, nine. Move your mouse pointer over the side of the platform. You'll see a second green dot. This is another attachment that tells Roblox where, the cons con where to connect the end of the constraint. Carefully move the mouse until the second attachment is positioned directly across from the first attachment. Click the mouse button to add this ending attachment. Boop. There's a lot of words for a simple constraint. Just saying. Great job! The red line uh, that connects the two green attachments to your object shows where the new hinge is. Tip, attachments can move, wait, attachments can be moved just like other parts. If attachment isn't positioned where you like it, select it in the game editor and then drag it around with the move tool. And then click accept for the new button. Okay, changing the weight. Right now, the platform can spin around freely on the hinge. It might seem like you're 100% finished, but there's another important thing to consider. Plat the platform's weight. Imagine this platform exists in real life and that it was even bigger than you. If, uh, if it was made from, a s from solid metal, you would put an apple on one end, it probably wouldn't do much. Why? Because the apple doesn't weigh very much compared to the heavy metal platform. Now imagine that same platform was made out of cardboard, like an empty box. If you put an apple on one end, it would probably tip down because the apple's weight is enough to move the light cardboard platform. For your obby, consider the same thing. What would happen? What will happen if the player jumps onto one side? Will the platform move easily or uh, that the player is quickly dumped into empty space? Or will the platform move slowly, so slowly that the 
the player can just stand there like a normal anchored platform. Set the density. Oh gosh, here we go. Here we go. Now we're getting into the physics part of it. Uh, in Roblox, when you create a part, its weight is automatically assigned based on its size. If you create a huge block that's 100 studs long by 50 studs across, it will weigh as much as uh, much more than a tiny block that is just 2 by 2 studs. In special cases though, you may need to set the part's weight to something different. Let's do that with the hinge platform. 1. Select the platform part in the game editor window or select it from the explorer window. 2. Open the properties window by selecting the view uh, tab and clicking the properties button. 3. Find the part section and look for the row named custom physical properties. You may need to expand the part section by clicking the small arrow next to the name. 4. Click the, sm uh, click the small checkbox inside the row. 5. For density, type in a value type in a higher value like five okay so select the part make sure that your properties window is viewed just like that then over here select on behavior wait was it behavior no it's under part part custom physics like that There's no density. Why isn't there density? Density should be there. Oh, there we go. Click there. Density. It says seven. I'm gonna put five. It says friction 0.3. I don't know if we actually need that or not, but friction is gonna be 0.3. Elasticity is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. By the way, defaultio, this is one reason why we can't um, long plank anymore is because these custom properties were put in there and now long planks have m less friction and you just slide down them this might also be why the parts are falling through each other but i think that's a collision thing so yeah i don't think defaultio is going to be watch watching my how to roblox studio tutorial <laughs> but you might tell him about it. You might tweet out to him and say, hey, Defaultio, check the uh, density and the friction of the parts of the planks. Could be an idea. All right, what is density? Basically, Roblox has, uh, basically, it tells Roblox how heavy a part is no matter its size. In real life, imagine a block of cement and a block of styrofoam. Even though, even if both blocks are about the same size, the cement block is much heavier than the styrofoam block and it's more difficult to move. By setting a higher density value, the hinge platform will not move as easily when the player is standing on it. So because I had mine made out of metal, it was seven density. We put it down to five because that's what the tutorial said. If it had been made out of wood, it might've been down like two or three, 0.2 or 0.3, something like that. Okay, um, finishing up. The last step is to move the platform back to its original position, touching the support part. After that, it would look weird just floating in space. That wouldn't look weird. Have you seen all the Roblox games? Seriously. All right, let's move this back in just like that. There we go. Uh, note, for simple things like hinge platforms, you don't need to move the part into perfect alignment. When you run the game, Roblox will snap the attachments uh, attach parts together so that each side of the attachment meets up in the same place. For complex, complex mechanisms, however, you should make sure that all the parts are lined up perfectly with the other parts that they're attached to. Um, time to test the hinge. All right, so here we go. We're going to hit play. Now run over and jump onto where you put the obstacle. When you jump onto it, the platform should tip back and forth like a seesaw. Your goal is to balance and move across it without tipping off into empty space. Tip, to change how easy the hinge the hinge platform tips back and forth, the player uh, walks around on it. Set the density to, okay, that's the thing we just did. Building a turning platform is gonna be next. Let's go ahead and test this one and go. Here we are, go. Did it fall down? Make sure it didn't fall down, okay. Got a transparency part, good, good, good. Good, and here we go, ready? Ooh, ooh. 
It's a tilty platform. Whoa, no, I fell down. <laughs> Very cool. So now we have a tilting platform. Now I see one problem with this. What if the platform got tilted by another player and it was like facing directly up? That could be a problem. Just saying. Density. Friction. Density and friction. All play a part in this. Oh no. Oh no. There we go. There's what I was talking about. Like the hinge needs a little bit of restraint because now what? Now what am I supposed to do? Or players coming in behind me, what are they supposed to do? And we'll get to that in a second. Oh gosh, oh gosh. No. All right, let's hit stop. Stop. Okay. Uh, creating plat uh, the platform in the base. Okay, sorry, this is part three. Building a turning platform. Ready for the next challenge? Uh, now we'll build a basic turning platform that makes the player jump at the right time to land safely on the platform. Whew. Creating the platform in the base. Turn, uh, the turning platform will spin around like a clock hand, but it also needs a solid base to be anchored to. Otherwise, it would just fall into the space. Okay. Create the base. Create a sim simple part for the platform base. Somewhere near another platform in your obby, but not too close. Create a small block part. Okay. So we're going to create a small block part just like that. And we're going to scale this out, out like that. Good. That should be fine. Uh, we'll come down just a little bit. Don't want to be too crazy with it. And go in a little bit. By the way, let's change the material just for fun and the color. There you go. Uh, anchor the part to space. Just click on the anchor button or you can go into properties. Create the platform. Now create a platform that will eventually spin around and around. Position the platform so that it is sits on top of the base that you just created. So to do this simply, I'm going to hit control D and then move this part up like that. And then I'm going to uncheck the anchor and I'm going to scale this out. Boom. Just like that. Now that might be a little bit too close. So I'm going to grab both of these and just move them back some. I don't want the edges to hit that or get stuck. Okay. Uh, next, create a platform, blah, 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 that you just created on top of that. There we go. Important, do not anchor this part because it's going to spin around and around so it doesn't need to lock in place. Um, name the part. All right, we're going to call this one platform. Okay, click off, click this one. We're going to rename it to platform base. And then it says turn platform. So click this one. Rename it to Turn Platform. I'm doing the exact naming that they're saying inside the tutorial because I don't know if they're going to use this for something else later on. Back in the game editor window, find and select the part, uh, the platform part itself. In the explorer window, we right click on the parts name and select rename for each one of the parts and do them as according to the, the plan. Attaching the parts. The basic setup of, okay, the basic setup of the base and the platform is done. But there are, there's nothing special about it yet. In fact, if you run the game, the platform will probably just fall off into the bit. Yeah, it, it will. Uh, just like the hinged platform, we're going to attach the platform to its base with a hinge constraint. Um, wait, with a hinge constraint, are we? I thought there was motors or something. To get a better view of things, make sure that you lift the part up. Boop, 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 just like that. All right. On this one, we're going to select uh, select the platform in the game window or the, edit, the in the game window or select it from the explorer window. Okay, so do just like I did. Uh, zoom in to get a better view. Make sure that the part you're viewing the model tab. Yeah, we're viewing the model tab. Um, in the constraint, select the small arrow and create a hinge. So create hinge. Perfect. <sighs> move your mouse so it's over the center, like that. Carefully move your mouse uh, until it's centered. 
click on the mouse to add it, uh, adjust the camera view so you see the bottom of the platform located uh, above the base part. Carefully move your mouse over the bottom of the platform until you, the second one is perfectly uh, positioned directly above the first attachment. So just like this, zoom in, and that's perfect, just like that. Make sure that they're centered both X and Z, no, X and Y this is X that's Y and then Z is up and down no Y is up and down never mind forget I said anything uh, carefully move blah 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 all right to make it spin in the Explorer window find and expand the branches the platform base and the turntables all right so we're going to expand these here you can see to uh, see the new constraint objects attachment zero and hinge constraint, and then attachment one for the turn platform. And our example looks exactly like their example. Attachment zero. This is the first attachment that you added connecting to the top platform base. Connected to the top platform, top of platform base. Okay, that was a little confusing. Connected to the top of the platform base and the bottom of the turn platform. All right, uh, create a motor. At this point, the turning platform is very similar to the hinge platform you created earlier. It can spin around the hinge point, but there's no power to drive it. Fortunately, the hinge can also be made into a motor that turns the platform around and around. In the Explorer window, oh, sorry, step one. In the Explorer window, select the hinge constraint object of that attachment, right? Hinge constraint object that attaches the turning platform at the base. Okay. So that one, right? Platform base, turn platform. Is that right? Hold on. There's that one, there's that one, that one. Right? Platform base, platform base, good, 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 okay. In the properties window, look at the properties for the hinge constraint object. You don't need to worry about most of them, but there's one very important one, architecture type. That makes the basic hinge into a powered motor. So let's go ahead and close all of these down like that. And this is gonna be under hinge architecture type. We're gonna select motor like that. For this actuator type property, select the area to the right and select motor. Now select the motor in the section that appeared below, that one. To make the platform turn, you need to type in a new value for the angular velocity. Velocity is XYZ coordinates in a 3D space. It tells you how fast something is moving, unless it's angular, which is a rotation, so. Uh, the value tells Roblox how fast the motor should turn. In this case, it's going to be 0.5, uh, should be fine. Angular velocity, 0.5, just like that. Motor maximum acceleration should be infinity and motor max torque should be a thousand. Finally, change the value of max torque to a thousand. In, the fu uh, in your future game design, this value may need to be even higher for a motor to turn a very big and or heavy part. Finishing up, almost finished. The last step is to move the turning platform back down so that it rests on top of the base. Simply select the part and move back into place that back to its original position now let's test the platform here we go here we go oh gosh please work it's not moving why is it not moving oh goodness why aren't you moving All right, stop. What did I do wrong here? Maybe this needs to be smaller. One, two, and three. Like that? Try that. Nope, that's not working. Stop. Mm okay, turn platform. 
platform base to motor 0.5 oh maximum torque 1000 there we go there we go now F5 it didn't do it I did not know it did do it I didn't do it I didn't do the thing okay if you did everything right, the train platform should now spin around and around. The player's challenge is to jump from the platform at the right time, then let it carry them around so uh, until they can safely jump off onto another platform. But it's not. Is that because it's attached? That could be why. Hold on. Let's move this up slightly. Oh gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh man, goodness. Okay, so let's hit play like that. Hmm, not working. What material is this made out of? Actually, you know what? Let's go back to the hinge, motor, angular velocity 0.5, maximum torque is gonna be 10,000. Why not? Oh, now it's moving. Now it moves. That's why. We didn't have enough torque on it. Alright. Yay! Now it's moving. <laughs> now, this could be something actually really fun. So, let's hit stop. I'm going to take this and put it back down just a little bit. Oh, come on move back down I'm gonna take this whole thing both these both these parts we're gonna go duplicate and move them just like this but now we're gonna have them going in opposite directions um actually duplicate again and okay so let's delete these. Delete. And delete. And we're gonna turn this one. Hold on. We're gonna have to turn it completely around. Um, rotate, rotate, rotate. Like that. Are they gonna get stuck? They're probably gonna get stuck. I'm gonna try though. Yep, they're gonna hit each other. They're gonna hit each other. No. Oop. Okay, so I gotta I gotta move these a little bit more. Maybe like that. Maybe. Possibly. Okay. F five. And this is extra part. This is this is not. Part of the tutorial itself. They just miss each other. That is amazing. So much fun. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. And good. So, if they're close enough together, I should just be able to walk off. Woo! and then let that carry me off to the opposite direction. Good. That's the end of the tutorial. Amazing job. Now your obby has some cool obstacles with challenges, uh, which challenge the player to jump and move with greater skill. What's next? Check out the tutorials below. They will help push your game even higher levels, to even higher levels, creating traps and pickups. We might be doing that next, maybe, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting into the scripting part, but it's really going to be, you know, in the future anyway. So thank you everyone for watching this episode of Learn Roblox with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget that all these tutorials are available online for you to read and go through and have fun and love. So um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. And we'll talk to you very soon. Outro. Oh, wow. That was like 40 minutes long.
Thank you.